All right, let's talk more about changes in the brain in early childhood. Previously, I talked about general changes in weight in the brain. I mentioned myelination is something that leads to more efficient processing. And I talked about the prefrontal cortex, how it is continuing to develop. Another part of the brain where we see some important changes during early childhood is now I hesitate with pronunciation because I've heard this pronounced multiple ways. The corpus callosum or the corpus callosum. I hear it pronounced different ways. I'm not entirely sure which one is correct, but the corpus, let's say callosum. The corpus callosum is this thick band of fibers down the middle of the brain between the two hemispheres of the brain. You may be familiar with the fact that you have right and left hemispheres, right and left sides of the brain. And so this is the part of the brain that grows and myelinates rapidly during early childhood. Lots of growth and lots of development of that fatty insulating covering on axons that helps with faster, more efficient processing, more efficient signaling, more efficient communication between neurons. And so it's a band of nerve fibers that connects those two hemispheres. What does its function seem to be? It facilitates communication between the two hemispheres. It is like, the, the without a functioning corpus callosum, you'd have two separate brains. You'd have a right and left brain not communicating with each other. In fact, there are cases of people who have damage to the corpus callosum where their functions on the right and left hemispheres don't coordinate, don't uh, integrate. Uh, and so, uh, and, and it causes problems in their functioning. All right, so during early childhood, you do see more coordination between these hemispheres. Um, we also have a, a process, a phenomenon called lateralization, all right? Lateralization kind of means sidedness, all right? And so this is the specialization in certain functions by each hemisphere or side of the brain. You might have heard the term like right brain functions, left brain functions. The whole brain is involved in our functioning, but some specific skills and functions involve a lot of one particular hemisphere. You may have heard that language is uh, particularly uh, uh, localized, lateralized to the left hemisphere. I always remember that because language left, those little mnemonics that help us remember things. And so you have one side that's dominant for each activity. Now, there are some exceptions to this though. Um, well, are there exceptions to typical patterns? Let's talk about left-handedness. Let's talk about lefty. Typically, I have a few students in my classes who are left-handed. I have a child who is left-handed. I've had the experiences where trying to remind their teachers, make sure they get the left-handed scissors. And sometimes they leave their left-handed scissors lying around and I pick them up and try to use them. I'm like, what's wrong? Oh, right, these are not made for my, these are not made for a right handed person like me. These are made for a left-hander like my child. So left-handedness is something that if an individual has that, most people are right-handed, some people are left-handed. Uh, left-handedness left is present early on. You can see it in newborns. You can see a preference for that left side rather than that right side. Now, culturally and historically, there have been times and have been cultures and places where left-handedness was uh, discouraged or even corrected. In fact, I recently found out that my aunt who passed away recently, uh, she was left-handed and they corrected her. They forced her to write right-handed. And I always remember how she, you know, she had really like, like difficult to read handwriting and she hated writing. And I'm, and it's like so much makes sense knowing that they tried to get her to pretend to be something that she wasn't. They tried, rather than supporting her as a lefty, they tried to change her. By the way, that does not work. You're still a lefty. You're just pretending to be a righty when you do that. 
And so with left-handedness, first of all, left-handedness is advantageous in some professions, uh, athletics and also other professions where it's just, it can be an, it can be an advantage to be left-handed. Uh, but also we see some, in, some unique things about left-handedness. You have a thicker corpus callosum in people who are left-handed and sometimes lateralization is a little different in people who are left-handed you see the brain functions you know uh lateralized in slightly different ways so we do see some uniqueness in brain development in those who are left-handed now i can't emphasize enough you've got a child who's left-handed they are left-handed let them use their left hand don't force them to write with their right hand. Give them left-handed scissors. Get the um, nowadays most desks are, are are the kind that have the full desktop. But like back in my day, we had these half desks where it was supposed to be just enough for your hand, and they were right-handed desks. And the people with the left, the, you know, the lefties, if they didn't have a left-handed desk, they're like, great, I can't write. Notebooks are made for right-handed folks, and so people who are left-handed, they often end up with. Um, the, the, the spirals digging into their hand and you know, you know there's there's lots of disadvantages we we are in a right-handed world uh, but research definitely shows you can't force someone to be right-handed you can just you can make a left-handed person pretend to be right-handed and not do as well as if they were supported and allowed to be left-handed